إنها كانت وكانت. She was and she just was. This is the way the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم described his wife خديجة رضي الله تعالى عنها. A marriage can be described as like the ideal marriage, one that we should aspire to have in our own lives. They were married for 25 years. The Prophet ﷺ, uh, loved her deeply and uh, she was not just his wife, but she was also the mother of all of his children. So you should know that the Prophet had seven children, four girls and three boys, and all of them, they, were, they came from Khadija. Not only was then she the mother of his children, but she came, became his companion. In fact, she was the first female to embrace Islam uh, when the Prophet ﷺ first received revelation. So she has so many uh, achievements to her name um, and she is obviously one of the mothers of the believers for all the wives of the Prophet ﷺ are known as the mothers of the believers. So how did this beautiful journey begin becoming the wife of the Prophet ﷺ? Well, it goes back before the Prophet ﷺ became a messenger of Allah. Um, and in the books of Sirah we find that the Prophet ﷺ was working as a youngster, as a shepherd, but then he became a tradesman. And it was during this part of his life, when he was about 25 years old, that the Prophet ﷺ, he was employed by Khatija, who was a wealthy a businesswoman, to go on a business trip and to take her commodities and a caravan to Asham, Syria, and to sell on her behalf uh, and thereby splitting the profits. Now, the Khatija anha, she wasn't married at this time. Some scholars say she had been uh, widowed twice over, and so she sent her, uh, her colleague, who was named Maysara, also his, her servant, along with the Prophet ﷺ on this business trip. On the way there, Maysara, he saw some really remarkable things coming from the Prophet ﷺ. For instance, uh, on the way there, imagine them crossing through the deserts, they have a huge uh, caravan, and uh, heat is sweltering, Maysara would find that whenever he would come close to the, the camel of the Prophet ﷺ, he would feel this kind of relief and coolness as if there was a shadow being cast over him. And so he would look around to see, you know, is there an oasis nearby or are there any trees? And to his amazement, he looked up in the sky and he saw a cloud uh, hovering over the Prophet ﷺ, casting a, a shadow. And he noticed that wherever the person would go on his camel, him unknowing that so too the cloud would follow as well. That's something obviously that uh, sparked his curiosity. But nonetheless, when he went further into the journey and he got to spend time with the Prophet he noticed his great character and also how honest he was. And unlike other Arab uh, tradesmen, he wouldn't uh, number one, invoke the uh, idols when trying to make sales, you know, I swear by Allah and Uzza and Manat. And on top of that, he was very honest as well. So he wouldn't, uh, you know, sell something for a price it wasn't worth. And Mesa was amazed that they ended up bringing back two or three times the normal amount. And a part of that was because there was no stealing going on by the Prophet Wasallam. But when he came back, he told Khatija that you wouldn't believe it. We made three times more profit than we normally do. And so Khatija was like really interested and intrigued. Who is this man? Tell me more about him. Now they all lived in Mecca, and in Mecca there weren't that many people. But Maysara, when he told her about the cloud and he told her about the character of the Prophet, uh, she started to think about the Prophet in more than just a, uh, a colleague or someone who works for her. In fact, she began to think about possibly the idea of marriage. And one thing led to another. And we find that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he agreed when the proposal came to marry Khatija Radiallahu Ta'ala Anha, and that is where it all began. But one of the things we learn uh, from their marriage is something quite interesting, and that is the way Khatija chose the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was not on a superficial level, like he's rich or he's good looking. Uh, no doubt the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was financially secure, obviously he's working, and no doubt the Prophet was handsome but it was the fact that it was to do with his character and also this idea that he was somehow connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you know he was a man of dignity, of honor and of good character. And that kind of uh, gives us an insight as to what we should look when we're looking for a spouse. You know, we know that you know, things like how attractive the person is are important, how financially stable they are is important, but then there's something to do with character and what, how you know, what kind of integrity does this person have? 
what is the character like, how good are their manners, etc, etc. So that's one of the interesting things we learn from this marriage. But also, we learn something else because the 25 years that they were married for, when the person uh, lost Khadija, that year was known as Amul Huzn, the year of sorrow. Um, that's how it got named because, well, one of the reasons is because he lost his wife Khadija. And uh, subhanAllah, some of the companions said, you know, he went um, to the burial of his wife and, you know, he prepared the burial himself. And though it was from his sunnah to smile, the person wasn't seen smiling for uh, many, many weeks after the passing away of Khadija anha. And in fact, many years later, he's now married to Aisha and, uh, you know, he's speaking about Khadija and, and just, you know, praising her, and celebrating her character and just remembering her. Aisha gets very jealous and it's a natural type of jealousy. And she says something like, you know, um, it's as if there's no woman in the world except for Khadija. You know, as if to say, what about me? I'm here. And the Prophet he said those words, innaha kanat wa kanat. She was and she just was. Like he couldn't find the words to describe his wife Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha. And inshallah, you know, she is a role model to all sisters, in fact, to, to all Muslims. And we pray that inshallah, in paradise, we get to see her, we get to meet her, we get to pay our respects as well. Inshallah, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.